Hey yo, Raptor fans, why do y'all hate Goran Dragic? Oh no, yeah, right, that, I get it, that makes sense. Listen, I'm a Heat fan, I'm a Goran fan, but for that, I can't make an excuse, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, when I first heard it, I loved it because I'm a Heat fan, but still, I was like, yeah, that's not really a cool thing to say. I wanted to say it got lost in translation, but I don't really think it did. So off rip, Goran already didn't get off on the right foot with Toronto. Now he did apologize for it and he acknowledged that the Raptors have a ring and he doesn't, which I'm sure Raptors fans love because I'm sure they were all over Twitter talking about that. And then Goran would say that he respects Kyle Lowry, so he's not going to wear number seven because he knows that jersey is going to go up in the Raptors one day. I, I don't really think Goran had a choice, to be honest. They probably would have never allowed him to wear a seven. But still, Goran was doing his best to try to become acclimated with the Toronto Raptors culture. So Goran Dragic would go on to play five games for the Raptors where he averaged only eight points a game on 38% from the field and 26% from three. Those are terrible efficiencies. Another reason why Raptors fans probably hate Dragic, and I don't blame you. The last game that Goran played with the team was on November 13th, and just a couple weeks later on November 28th, the team sent out this official statement. The statement basically says that Goran is taking some time away from the team for personal reasons. They also go on to say that Goran has been a great mentor to our younger players and a valued teammate for our veterans. And the last sentence, which interests me the most, says, Goran has the backing of Masai, Ujiri, Nick Nurse, and the entire organization and we wish him nothing but the best. Also interesting to me is a month later, Nick Nurse said that Goran Dragic is not a part of the plan for the Toronto Raptors moving forward. The reason why those statements are interesting to me is because it appears that the leaving of Goran Dragic was pretty mutual both ways. Earlier in the year, the Toronto Raptors benched Goran Dragic in favor of further advancing their youth movement, which completely makes sense. But of course, I think Goran still has a lot left in the tank, so he wanted to play, understandably so. There was this funny tweet I saw from at OG for three underscore, where he basically said, this has been Goran Dragic all season, where the Raptors say they're short staffed and Goran's like, damn, that's crazy. Good luck though. As funny as that meme is, again, I don't really think that's the case. It really appears that Goran Dragic wanted to play. The Raptors just kind of didn't want to go in that direction. Now, I understand what Raptors fans are probably saying. Goran could have continued to sit on the bench all year and continue to be a mentor for the great young pieces that Toronto has, but I guess he just didn't want to. Which is weird to me because in his short time there, Goran already started to seem like he was being a great mentor. Before the season even started, he had a lot of nice things to say about Scotty Barnes during training camp. Uh, Scotty. Scotty, I mean, he's, he's hilarious. He's so funny. Good kid, works hard. Um, you know, you're gonna see him to be first in the gym, last to go. And even once the season started, it seemed like the team liked him a lot, especially Scotty, because you could see him hyping him up here during the pregame intros. Regardless though, it's pretty obvious that Goran wants out. And since then, he's been seen in Miami several times whether he's working out in the training facility or he was even at the Heat Clippers game just a couple days ago. And again, Raptors fans, I get y'all. I would hate it too if a guy on my roster was flirting this hard with another team. That being said though, it's clear to me that Goran wants to come back to Miami. And I think most Heat fans would like him back too, just because he was such a part of Heat culture for so long. And for the most part, I think Heat fans think he'll get his jersey retired here one day. I know I do. Which is tough because Kyle Lowry's probably gonna win like three championships with us too. So do they retire two number sevens? I don't know. But anyways, how can Heat get Goran Dragic back? Well, they can't trade for him because he makes 19 million a year. And the only way we could really send out that equal money is if we traded Duncan, which thinking about that now, I'm kidding. Y'all know I love Duncan. That's my dude. It doesn't help that he had a big fat zero points yesterday, the same amount that I did. And he's getting paid 90 million more than me, but that's still my guy. I wouldn't trade him for Goran Dragic. So the avenue for a direct trade really isn't there. And by rule, if the Toronto Raptors were to buy out Goran, he's not allowed to come right back here anyways. So that leaves us with one option to get Dragic back here. The Toronto Raptors would have to trade him to another team and that team would have to buy him out only then would he be allowed to come back to Miami. I could see that happening because preferably Toronto doesn't want to buy out Goran Dragic because they can use his contract to facilitate a trade. So when I was doing my research, Toronto currently is over the soft salary cap, but they're under the luxury tax cap. Basically what that means is they're over the cap to keep their own players, but they don't have to pay the luxury tax. So next year, the Raptors are actually 10 to $15 million under the luxury tax cap but that's not money they can use to sign someone else because they're over the soft salary cap. If that doesn't make sense, I'm sorry. I was reading an article that was referencing another article from The Athletic. And when I went to click on that original article from The Athletic, there's a paywall. And y'all know I'm not paying to read that article, I'm sorry. We're not monetized yet because you need a thousand subscribers for that, but I'm almost there. So go ahead and hit sub, help your boy out. I appreciate y'all for real. So basically what I determined is Toronto could trade Guan Dragic to another team, get a player back who makes equal salary in return, except they're on a multi-year deal 
opposed to Goran Dragic, who's an expiring deal. So that would allow the Raptors to add some new players for the next couple years, although they don't have any money to spend in free agency. The article I was reading gave a couple examples. They said that the Raptors could flip Dragic to Dallas and in return get Trey Burke, Dwight Powell, and a first round pick to kind of sweeten it up. The Raptors would probably do that move just because they get a first round pick for a guy in Goran who they really didn't want anyways. And this article argues that Dallas would do it because it would free up cap space for the Mavericks to re-sign Jalen Brunson and Dorian Finney-Smith. But I personally don't think Dallas would trade a first round pick just to do that. The other example this article gives would be a Goran trade to the Clippers and in return the Raptors get Eric Bledsoe. That would free up cap space for the Clippers next year and the Raptors would get Bledsoe. But at 32 years old, I don't really think the Raptors would want Eric Bledsoe. So I spent some time in the trade machine and tried to come up with a trade of my own. And when I started thinking, I thought of the name Karis LeVert, who's been in a lot of trade rumors recently. The initial reports say that the Indiana Pacers want at least two first round picks for Karis LeVert. I think that's a steep asking price, but this is the trade I came up with where that potentially works. Now from the Raptors side of things, you get Goran Dragic, who you didn't want anyways, and you get Karis LeVert, who's under contract for the next two seasons. In my opinion, Karis LeVert would fit perfect in Toronto. He has a lot of scoring, which they could use, and they would probably prefer another backcourt player than a frontcourt player. Also, he fits their timeline perfectly. Karis LeVert is 27 years old, and so is Fred Van Fleet, and so is Pascal Siakam. So overall, I think he'd be a perfect fit in Toronto. Now on the Pacers side of things, they would get Goran Dragic in those two first round picks that they wanted. Ideally, the Pacers would probably want another player they could use in return, but I don't really think they're gonna get that in addition to two first round picks. But having those two first round picks would be nice because they can use those to package with another player we heard in trade rumors like DeMontis Sabonis or Miles Turner, and maybe they can go get themselves Ben Simmons or somebody along those lines. For example, if the wheels were to fall off Boston and they want to trade Jalen Brown, they could go after someone like him. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's just an example. Additionally, the Pacers traded Victor Oladipo for Karis LeVert and two second round picks. So now if they flip Karis LeVert for two first round picks, that means they got two first, two seconds, just for Victor Oladipo, who really didn't want to be there anyways. So that's not that bad a package. Raptors fans, I don't know if y'all would be willing to trade two first round picks for Karis LeVert. Y'all could let me know in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure we can all agree that he would at least be a good fit there. And the final step of the trade is the Indiana Pacers buy out Goran Dragic and he comes back to the Miami Heat. Why would the Pacers buy out Goran Dragic? Well, simply they'd have to pay him less money. They could keep him the remainder of the year, pay his full contract and lose him when the year ends or they could pay him five to $7 million less. They can agree to a buyout and go on, can come to Miami, come win a ring. As of right now, the Heat have one roster spot open and everybody knows that's gonna go to Caleb Martin when they convert his two-way contract. And Miami would have to do that, otherwise Caleb can't play in the playoffs. So Miami will have to do another trade, get rid of KZ Akpala, send us some other team, open up the roster spot for Gogi. I was gonna say no shade to KZ Akpala, but that's a lot of shade. But everybody on the team plays except him. So what do you want me to do? I'm sorry. So that is my idea of how the Miami Heat can acquire Goran Dragic this season. I wanna say a couple of things though before the video ends. I posted a video yesterday of my recap and reaction to the triple overtime game. And I had a few Raptors fans in my comments telling me, oh, give the Raptors credit, stop being a sore loser. That's not how I was trying to come across in the video at all. Actually, I specifically gave shout outs to Gary Trent Jr. and Scotty Barnes and gave them a ton of credit. And actually I've said many times on this channel how much I respect what the Toronto Raptors are building. Just a couple weeks ago in my recap video of the first game against Toronto, I said this. I do want to give the Toronto Raptors some credit because at one point they had a starting lineup of OG, Scotty Barnes, Precious, and Pascal Siaka. That lineup defensively is just, I mean, I don't want to say godly, but it's pretty good. We all know how long their wingspan is everything, and they have that switchability that the Heat love to do as well. That team is going to be really great in the future, and honestly, I'm a big fan of the assets that they so have. So again, no hate or disrespect to the Raptors. Y'all are going to be really great for a long time. The last thing I want to do is shout out my boy Nick, aka PO13O, 13 -O, aka Poyo. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, bro, but he's the producer of the background music y'all heard in the last couple of videos. All his stuff is linked in the description, so go check him out and give him a follow. I also want to shout out the homie Radix the Ruler, who y'all know as the artist of the outro music for these videos. My dog is one of the best rappers in the game right now, and he has music for every vibe, every mood you in. So go check him out too. His stuff is in the description. But now that the video is over, hit like if you did, hit dislike if you didn't. I don't care if you think I suck, let me know in the comments below. Raptors fans, I'm willing to take all the hate if y'all think this video is stupid, just let me know. But at least subscribe to the channel because once I hit a thousand subs, the quality can keep going up and up. So I appreciate y'all for real. Other than that, I'll probably see y'all on Monday with a recap of the Boston game, but who knows? Cause you may never see me again. Y'all will find our next video or not. I'll see y'all later. I need bigger state, 80s lamb. I so tank when the pain again. I escape from this famous land.